Hi everyone, this is a short summary of 4x4 Bienvenido a Bordo movie. Before you watch this video, you can support us by hitting the like button and subscribing to our channel. It will only take you a couple of seconds, but it's very important for us. Thank you all. Well, let's get started. The movie begins with the scene showing an urban district with a great number of CCTV cameras everywhere, which are there to protect people from all kinds of thieves. We see a young man. He looks around for a bit, then approaches a car and easily cracks the door open with the help of a tennis ball. He gets into the car, takes the stereo out and, after rummaging around, decides to urinate in the back seat. Having finished his dirty business, the man tries to get out of the car, but the door won't open. Every door in the car is locked, including the trunk. Starting to panic, he decides to break the windows, but he can't do that either. Moreover, even the key he found in the car doesn't help him. Having dismantled the door, he sees that there's solid metal inside, and the floor is the same. He has only one other option, to fire the gun he has on him. However, the bullet doesn't break the windshield. Moreover, it ricochets and hits the unfortunate burglar in the foot. As he bandages the wound, he sees a young woman passing by. She looks at the car windows but fails to see the man sitting in it. He starts banging on the glass and screaming, but she can't hear him. He grabs his phone, but it immediately runs out of battery. He screams and drinks the rest of his Pepsi. At night, the wound hurts a lot and doesn't stop bleeding, and the annoying cricket keeps him restless. Raising his hand to swat at it, he changes his mind and decides not to kill the insect. As he wakes up the next morning, he is very thirsty, but there's no water in the bottle. There's nothing but a few drops of condensation on the glass. Turning on the radio and relaxing a little, he gets down to work and begins to hammer the metal layer of the door. The music is interrupted by a phone call. It's the owner of the car. He tells the unfortunate thief that his entire car is a bunker on wheels and that it's under full remote control. No one can hear him. The car is completely armored and he is under the man's control now. The man on the other end of the line tells a little about himself, that he's a widower and how old he is. He also asks a question. What would you do if you caught your son stealing? The burglar begins to ask for a drink, says that he's hot and loses his temper. He begins to threaten the man and his entire family. The owner of the car hangs up. Suddenly, the air conditioner in the car turns on. It happens to be a real salvation from the heat, but the joy lasts only until it gets very cold in the car. The air conditioner doesn't turn off. He manages to plug the air deflectors, but it doesn't help. The man is about to become Jack Dawson when the air conditioner goes off and the owner of the car calls again. He asks the same question. What would you do if you caught your son stealing? He says that he will give him water for the correct answer. The car burglar replies that he would slap him and take him to the police. But no, the answer turns out to be fundamentally wrong. This is your son and you're his role model. The man tells several stories from his life when his family was robbed. He also reveals that he is a doctor and hangs up. Later, we learn that he is an obstetrician. After spending some more time in the car, the thief sees the police drive by and stop. He starts yelling at the top of his lungs, but the cop just writes a ticket and leaves. Another call. The owner of the car asks for passport data in exchange for water. The burglar tells everything. His name is Ciro, and the doctor informs him that there is water in the rear windshield washer. Having drunk the water, he feels the agonizing expectation of the unknown. In the morning, he tries to break through the door again. As he receives the next call, the car burglar says that he is feverish and asks what to do. The doctor asks to describe the wound and says that it's bad. He turns on the heating and starts telling how well this day had started. Then he says that he has a tumor and he has only one year left to live. A while later, starving Ciro eats a piece of paper and drinks his urine. He notices two guys who want to break into his car but don't have enough time. They're driven away by the locals who begin to brutally beat down on them. They are very aggressive towards an ordinary guy who hasn't even had time to do anything bad yet. At night, Ciro decides to eat his pet cricket, but he can't do it. Out of boredom, he talks to the cricket and tries not to lose hope. In their next conversation, the doctor begins to mock the thief again and describes how he's eating his breakfast, but he's distracted. Having said that he is in a good mood, he mentions that there is a chocolate bar under the pedal. Ciro eats it in a single bite. After that, he starts watching people on the street and notices that they are all very scared and expect something bad to happen any second. A while later, he manages to make a small hole, but no one can hear him. He releases the cricket and says goodbye to it. The doctor tells Ciro that he visited his wife and son and gave them money to leave. Ciro begs to see his son, but the man tells him that he has studied his biography in detail. 
Turns out that Ciro is guilty of several deaths and has served a prison sentence. During the night, he is so bored that he continues to press the engine start button repeatedly and at one moment the car suddenly starts. He can only switch to reverse gear and gaining speed he hits a pole. The rear windshield shatters, so he manages to get out of the car. The first thing he does is go into a store and eat a lot. The guard comes up to him and starts to squabble. Ciro takes out his gun and shoots him. This turns out to be a dream. Completely desperate, he decides to commit suicide, but the doctor interferes. He pulls the trigger, but the shot doesn't follow. The doctor says he needs to have a look at him. He comes and gets in the car. The doctor brings him a joint and squeezes pus out of the wound, saying that it will heal. Ciro takes his gun and leaves it in plain sight. The doc answers a phone call and turns away. Ciro takes advantage of the moment and shoots him. After getting out of the car, he fires the gun, hoping that someone will go out into the street. The doctor isn't seriously wounded, so he drags Ciro back inside. There's a police girl nearby. The doctor has no time to get Ciro back into the car, so he takes the guy hostage. The police arrive and cordon off the area. Residents come out of their houses and many scream for the doctor to kill the guy, but there are also those who demand to let him go, saying that he's a human being after all. A negotiator from the police begins to tell the doctor why he's wrong. The doctor is sure that cops and lawyers are all corrupt and that the law doesn't work. If he lets the guy go now, he'll be released from custody the very next day. So he decides to take the law into his own hands. Some time later, the negotiator manages to talk the doctor into letting Ciro go. The thief is immediately taken into a police car, and the doctor himself, smiling sarcastically, opens the car door and leaves his phone with the timer on the roof. He blows himself up and gets media attention. There are news clippings saying that the doctor has raised the security issue across the country again. Ciro is to be released within a few hours. The cricket, released by Ciro, flies away and is eaten by a bird. The doctor hasn't changed anything. This is how the movie ends. Share your thoughts in the comments. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel and give the video a thumbs up. It's the best thing that you can do to support us. Remember to click on the notification bell to be the first one to see our new videos.